Hey there, thanks for your click and welcome to Got Tech. Now there are a number of incredible people out there in the land of YouTube who are making amazing vintage tech videos. If you don't already subscribe to and support on Patreon people like Alec at Technology Connections or Matt at Techmoan, I would strongly encourage you to do so. So what does someone like me add to the conversation? Well, admittedly not much, but I will say that as an adult, I still have the same fascination with and interest in this vintage technology as I did when I was a kid. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about one of the most fascinating pieces of technology that I think came out of the late 80s and early 90s, the Pioneer magazine-based CD changer. But before I get into that, let me tell you a little bit about my story and how I came to love technology as much as I do. According to my older siblings, my parents were pretty technologically advanced in the early 70s. But by the time I was born later that decade, they had lost all interest in acquiring the latest and greatest tech. For most of the 80s, our stereo was the same unit they'd pieced together 10 or 15 years prior. And don't worry, I still own it today. I was only allowed to buy a computer when I entered high school in the early 90s because I paid for it myself. But even though I lived in an analog home, in the midst of an increasingly digital world, I knew I could always dream. Although I was never very good at fixing things, I was always obsessed with mechanical things, especially cars. And I also loved music, both playing it and listening to it. Now, my parents did have a pretty good record and cassette collection when I was growing up, because much of it had been left behind by my older sister. But their records and tapes were basically it. Like most kids of the day, I didn't have a ton of money, or any money really, to spend on my own music. So it was up to the occasional trip to Caldor or Ames, where I bought my first album, Born in the USA if you're interested, along with hours and hours of our local Top 40 radio station that brought my interest in music and tech to a boiling point. I wanted music tons of it for my very own and in the latest format. Now I know that people my age, old, often talk about how easy the younger generation has it, at least in terms of technology. I mean, come on, you guys have access to hundreds of millions of books and videos and songs on your phone or the ability to simply click and have things delivered to your door. But back when I was a kid, it wasn't so easy. If you wanted to read something or watch it or listen to it, you actually had to go out and get it. And if you were 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, that took a whole lot of work. I grew up in a very rural area, 45 minutes to an hour away from the nearest shopping mall. For most of the 80s, if I wanted to buy a cassette tape, I had to take my allowance money and ask my mom to please drive me across the border to the next state where a small independent bookstore offered a limited selection of tapes and at full retail cost. If we were doing back to school shopping at the mall, maybe, maybe I'd get a chance to buy a few cassettes at the wall or Tower Records or Strawberries. But from the time I was probably 10 or 11 years old, I knew that those cassettes were going out of style. It was time for the compact disc. Ein revolutionierend neues Musiksystem. Philips Compact Disc Digital Audio. Of course, back in the early 90s, I wasn't buying CDs at all. At my local bookstore, at the mall, or anywhere else. Because I didn't own a CD player. But all of that changed for my birthday in 1992 when I convinced my parents to buy me the Holy Grail, a Sony D33 Discman. Sony Compact Disc Players. Your ears will tell you. It's not only what you play, 
it's what you play it on. So now you understand a bit more about why I love vintage technology. Yes, there's some nostalgia there, and yes, I'm probably engaging in some sort of wish fulfillment from my childhood. But the truth is that the way that these devices do their intended jobs fascinates me as much now as it did then. So enough talking, let's head downstairs and take a look at that pioneer. One disc, interesting. Six discs. Spirit in the air. Fantastic. Spirit that exists in a true pioneer. Introducing the only CD player that plays six discs. It's a pioneer. And with the push of a button, it'll play your musical fantasies forever. So here it is. This is the Pioneer PDM6, the middle unit here. Uh, it is right below my Denon DCD2000, uh, which was the first commercially available CD player. I'll talk more about that in a later video if anybody is going to watch this one. And then below it is my Oppo BDP93, which is my main CD player for the most part because it does play SA CDs. I've also got a Sony Discman original one right here behind me underneath this pile of CDs and a couple other Sony Discman and Walkmen behind the camera here, which I'm happy to share uh, on a future video. The cool thing about this Pioneer, which I will show you a close-up of right now, is that it did come with this incredibly awesome cartridge system. And there were two cartridges that came with the player, and I actually received both of them from the guy who sold this unit to me on eBay. There is the single disc cartridge, which is right here, and then the six disc cartridge, which is right here. And you can see that these cartridges are about the width of a two CD set. And that was apparently something that Pioneer felt was a marketable feature of this player. In fact, in a promotional video from the time, Pioneer was quick to point out what it considered to be the many benefits of its magazine system over traditional carousel CD changers, including the ability to fill up a magazine with six CDs and take those CDs with you anywhere you wanted to go. From the very beginning, the magazine was designed to be as compact as possible. This magazine is also designed to be used in vehicles so that the magazine can be used under any circumstances. A compact multi-disc automobile CD player has been developed to handle severe driving conditions. For maximum enjoyment while driving, care must be taken to provide for driver safety, such as this remote controller that can be fixed on the steering wheel. Thus, Pioneer offers the enjoyment of multi-play CD at home and in the car using the same magazine collections. All right, so I have to say I love the way these magazines are packaged. They come in these slip covers, and so that's the uh, single disc and that's the six disc. And you can see just the way that they're even packaged in the covers, the spines face out in such a way that you can see which magazine you're looking at. Now the six disc magazines open with these little detents in them and the detents are staggered every other drawer. And if one of the drawers is open, you can't open the others. And it takes a little bit of practice to get these open in such a way that you are loading one, two, three, four, five, six. But once they're open, they're actually very easy to load. Like many CD players of this era, you're gonna put the CD in face down and then you just pop it closed pop the next one open and load those CDs in as you go. It's relatively easy to do, and once it's done, you have a little magazine full of CDs. Now the single disc magazine is fascinating because it is exactly the same width as the six disc magazine, but it cannot be opened outside of the player. And I found that out the hard way as I was sitting there trying to force the thing open. I'll show you an above shot of that in just a few minutes. Now, I was also able to find new old stock versions of these magazines on eBay. And as you can see, they came in cool colors with labels. Pioneer really did expect that you were going to load CDs into these things and stack the magazines up themselves so that you could bring the magazines with you wherever you went.
A little bit of wishful thinking there. This is what the 6CD magazine looks like when it's full. This is, of course, the iconography of that six-disc magazine. These are some instructions. And those new old stock magazines that I bought had an additional banner on the instructions that said for home and car use. So by the time that these were manufactured, obviously Pioneer was really trying to get these magazines in people's homes and in their cars. So let's start with the six disc magazine. You press it in, there's a little spring load back there and uh, it sits very nicely. If you hit play, it will start playing track one of whatever the first disc is in order. So in this case, I have a disc one in there, so it's gonna play track one, disc one. In order to go to another track, I can hit that track number button and then hit play. You're gonna see we get a little bit of flashing as it does its thing, and then it's gonna go to the next track. You can also see, of course, on the face, we've got a number of other buttons that would have been very common on CD players of this era. Now, in order to move to the next disc or to another disc, you have to hit the disc number button and then the play button again. You get this clunking sound as the discs are exchanged and then the machine starts right up. When you're done, you can hit stop or you don't have to. And then when you hit eject, the cartridge pops out and apparently you just take it with you because that's what Pioneer wants you to do. Now, the single disc cartridge is more interesting. You pop it in first and then hit eject. At that point, you put your CD in, face down of course, but you don't get it back in by hitting eject. You have to press it in as you did with the larger cartridge and then hit play. Once you've done that, of course, all of the buttons work exactly the same as they did before. with the exception, of course, of the disc number buttons. And you can see in the display that there is only one disc in there. So once you hit stop and eject, that drawer pops out at you mighty quickly. Let's take a look at that from above. So again, you've got to push the entire drawer in first, then hit eject. It will pop out at you. You put your CD in, push the whole thing in, hit play, and you're ready to go. Now, Alec from Technology Connections has a great video about carousel CD changers, which I'll link to in the comments. Most people I knew, if they owned a CD changer, owned a carousel changer. I don't know that the household Pioneer magazine model really caught on as much as Pioneer hoped it would. CD player, not evolutionary, revolutionary. Except there was one place where it did catch on. In cars. The trunk-mounted car magazine changer was incredibly popular in the late 80s and especially the early to mid 90s, particularly in German models. I actually had one installed in my 2001 Volkswagen Jetta after I bought it, and though it was a pain to access via the trunk, especially when it was snowing outside, it did work beautifully with the factory sound system. Now by the mid-2000s, the price of a CD changer was plummeting, and you didn't need to stop at five or six CDs per magazine. You could easily buy a carousel changer with a capacity of 100, 200, or 500 discs like this one at any major retail electronics store for under 300 bucks. But did you really want to? I mean, trying to figure out which CDs you had in there was always such a chore. And anyway, once the iTunes Music Store opened its virtual doors in 2003, all bets were off anyway. But to me, in 2021, this Pioneer magazine changer is a winning technological relic because it did its job and it did it pretty damn well. And these players can still be had for cheap on eBay, so if you're in the market for a CD changer for some strange reason, you could do much worse. So anyway, there it is, the technology of tomorrow, yesterday, uh, 
today's techno tomorrow's anyway whatever you get the picture hope you enjoyed the video on the pioneer next week or next time i think i might tell you a little bit about my mid 80s mitsubishi cassette changer yes mitsubishi made both cars and cassette changers back in the day until then be safe be well have fun see you next time Thank you.